Welcome everyone to this week's edition of the GSM's Pride Spotlight. I have a returning guest, uh, Rick Dana, with me today. Well, thanks for coming back, Rick. Yeah, thanks for having me. So we've all learned about you. We know about you. We know about your past. We know that you were here for a long time. And then we actually got a really good audience when you last came out. So one thing I wanted to touch on was your hobbies. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a spe specific reason why, because there's kind of a funny scenario that went on. So Rick just went on uh, a trip that was to do with his hobbies, and I kind of got you in trouble, right? <laughs> just a little. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, what's your hobbies, Rick? What do you like to do? Uh, so, yeah, so first and foremost, my passion is archery. Yeah. So I love archery, and I love to hunt, bow hunt. I do play a little tennis on the side, but uh, mostly archery and bow hunting. Yeah. Uh, travel to um, archery tournaments all over the country, um, and then I hunt. Uh, you know, mostly in Missouri, but all out west as well, and uh, recently Canada. So it's uh, it's it's a lot of fun. And uh, so, what kind of anim animals do you usually hunt? Uh, here in here locally, of course, white-tailed deer and uh, turkeys. Um, out west, uh, usually um, elk, uh, mule deer. Yeah. Out there, and then my recent trip to Canada was a bear hunt. So it was well, we'll get okay. we'll get to that because that's the the funnest one, I guess. But. What, when you go turkey hunting, do you do that around Thanksgiving or when's the season for that? So turkey season is actually in the spring. So well, they oh. have a, they have a fall season, but the fall season I don't usually hunt because it's um, turkeys are very easy to pattern in the fall. Uh, they do the same thing every day, pretty much like clockwork. So very easy to um, harvest a turkey in the fall. Not much of a challenge. Yeah. Uh, in the spring though, it's much different because the they're breeding, so the toms which is a male turkey, of course. Yeah. The toms are um, all over the place. You have no idea where they're gonna be or where they're gonna turn up. Um, and, it's, and it's fun because they respond to the call very well in the spring. So it's fun to, uh, you know, to, to call them in and, and get them in that way. Other, otherwise, otherwise, in the fall, you just kind of sit and ambush. So how'd you coax them in? Or do you like feed it before the day before or how'd you get them in? No, you can't feed them, that's not legal. So. Um, <laughs> So basically, you, you know, you uh, locate them in the mornings. They'll usually gobble on the roost um, a few times. You locate them that way and then kind of get into a position where you think you're close. And then you call them in using a mouth call yeah. um, that sounds like a, a female turkey. Or, Let's hear it. Yeah. Uh, come on. Come on, Rick. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> Not on, no, I don't think I can do it on cue. I, I, uh, it, uh, you got to be able to do it on cue. What happens when you see a turkey? You you're not gonna, you're going to put me on video. Yeah, let's do it. Call come on. Turkey calling. All right, hang on here. Let me see if I can do this. <laughs> That's, That's what a female turkey well, sounds like. I'm going to find a video of a female turkey and yeah. see how close you are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> prob probably pretty close. Pretty close. Usually, I use a, a, a diaphragm call that you know, so it's actually a call you place in your mouth, and ah, then you okay. can, and it makes it louder. But um, I can do it pretty well with just my mouth, and uh, that's probably pretty close to what a female turkey sounds like. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. well, at least we know if uh, we ever have a, a victim of uh, molestation from a turkey, we know Rick might. We know where to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, what about the deer? When, when is your season? Uh, so deer season uh, with bow and arrow starts September 15th. Uh, it's a three month long season. So it runs uh, September 15th to uh, January 15th. Um, primarily I hunt in the very beginning week of November because that's the peak of the rut. So that's when the bucks are mo most active um, and you have a better chance of harvesting. What's the biggest issue? A you nice caught deer. Um, well, I haven't caught any, but I've I've harvested a few. Is that what you call it? Is that the, <laughs> is that the uh, official term? Catching deer. Harvesting? Yeah, catching. Yeah, yeah. So, um, there, so a deer is uh, basically the size on a buck is measured by, of it's course, points. body weight and antlers. Yeah. yeah. So they have a scoring system for the antlers in inches. Um, so, a 125 inch deer uh, with antler mass uh, gets you in what's called the Pope and Young Club, which is like the record book for, for deer. Um, the largest one I've ever shot is 171 and four eighths. So I've killed some, some pretty good sized deer over the years. 
Did you say 124 gets you in? 125 gets you in. I've and you did 170? 171 and 4 eighths is the largest. Um, I've got How big I've, was that? I've got plenty. It's big. It's, um, I don't know, it's probably this wide and that tall. Yeah, it's a big one. It's real thick. Um, I've got plenty of deer that are in the 140, 150 range. Um, what kind years. of pounds is that? Meat? Meat? Um, those bucks, those big bucks like that usually are, they're over 200 pounds um, on the hoof. You know, they're probably 200, 230, something like that. Jeez Louise. Yeah. Do you have a big deep freeze at home? I do. Yeah, I have a, have a big deep freeze. Two of them actually. Do you, do you have a process it yourself, or do you? I do butcher all my deer myself. You do. Yeah, it's just too expensive to to. And over the year, I mean, I've been doing it since I was a kid. So how did you learn to do that? Uh, I was taught. I had a there was a fellow that lived up the street, um, and uh, he had a he had an old farmhouse with a basement with a cellar, and we had two refrigerators in that cellar down there, and I'd shoot a deer, and we'd quarter it up and put it in those fridges and then I'd go up there in the evenings and he'd teach me how to cut them up and butcher them and I can butcher a deer just like a butcher I mean it's nothing to it now I've done so many of them. So do you do you skin them or do you uh, mm -hmm. so does that does the skin just the hide just pull off? Yeah so yes so you gotta you know you gotta take your knife and kind of trim it away a little bit once you get it enough it just peels right down. Yeah. Down to the bare meat? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Maybe I'll come watch you do that at one time. Yeah, it would be a lesson. Does this smell? Uh, no, no, I mean, n n no. It's not rotten, obviously. Yeah, no, it, no, it doesn't have any kind of real odor or anything like that to it. It's. Uh, Why'd you, would you have like a draining system for all the blood and stuff? Yeah. Or did you just let it drain on the floor? Well, we, when, I skin them, when I skin them, I do it all outside. So I have like a block and tackle hanging in a tree. So, you know, you hang the deer at the tree, skin the deer, quarter the deer in the tree, and it goes from the from quartering to the refrigerator and then you just basically pull out a piece at a time and, yeah. and butcher it up. Do you, do you ever like mince it up so you got sausage and stuff like mm -hmm. that? Or? Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'll make hamburger and sausage both. So I mix like, like for instance, the deer burger, you mix it with pork, you grind it up and um, yeah, it's, it's good. Mm -hmm. I've eaten them before. It's kind of yeah. So let's get on to the big boy then. Yeah. So you recently went to Canada and you went bear hunting, yep. hunting right? Yep, back in May. Yep. How much did you get? I, I don't want to say catch because it's, yeah. is it harvest? Yeah, harvest. <laughs> yeah. So I successfully harvested uh, one bear, which was, which was the limit. Um, you're allowed to shoot one bear. And um, yeah, it was, a, I mean, it was a great trip. I drove 19 hours to Canada. I hunted literally for about three hours and shot that bear. So after that, it was like four more days of just fishing. Was it scary? Or trying to, because that's th there's a big difference between a deer and a turkey versus a bear. Yeah, I like mean, a, a deer doesn't. I guess it could charge, but the likelihood is slim. Yeah, a bear though could really mess you up if it got. Yeah, yeah I mean, it could. Um, um, you know, you're up in a tree for one, so the bears. Yeah, but they can get up there. Yeah, they can climb it. So you're you're in a tree. The bears on the ground. Uh, you know, the bear. I mean, it knew I was there. They're not afraid. You know, there's they don't see very many people. You know, there's a lot of bears, um, so they're not afraid of you. So he basically, you know, looked at me and growled and kind of barked at me like a dog, like, hey, man, I, I know you're up there. You just stay right there. And then he went ahead and came on in. And, and uh, I watched him for about 30 minutes before I decided I was going to go ahead and shoot him. Um, but, yeah, it's a little bit, it, I mean, it, 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 is, it is something that, you know, it's a day. I consider it a dangerous animal. I mean, if it decided it wanted to come, because it was a black bear. Right? Yeah, if it decided yeah. it wanted to come up that tree or come after me, I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. You know, I got a bow and arrow in my hand, so they end up shooting in the face, and hopefully it goes away. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they got a pretty a hefty skull on those things. Like yeah. That. So the the biggest part of bear hunt is you just hunt with a buddy, and then you just hope that you're faster than him. So that way, if the bear comes after Fast you, your buddy. Yeah, you just, you just gotta be out outrun him. Well, I thought you're supposed to stand your ground one day. <laughs> that's what they say. They do say like make yourself look big and make a lot of noise and that sort of thing. I don't know if I could do that. But yeah, I, I think if that bear decided he wanted to successfully harvest me, he probably could have because there would have been nothing I could do about it if he decided to come up that tree. I wonder if they're sitting there and going locks his chair yeah. going. I'm gonna go harvest a human. <laughs> yeah, but it was great. It was a lot of fun. Uh, How big was that bear you got? 
Uh, about 350 pounds. Holy moly. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that wasn't, that not, that's not even fully grown, is it? Well, it is fully grown, but it, in the springtime, they don't weigh as much as in the fall because, you know, they hibernate all winter. Yeah, yeah. So they come out of hibernation and then they eat all summer long. In the fall, he'd probably been another 100 pounds, something like that. Yeah, it was a- How tall was your up? Um, he's about, if you, if you took his hide and you stretched it out, it's like six foot two, six foot three inches. So it's a big, big boy. Yeah, it's a good sized black bear. So what did you, what did you do with the meat on that? Have so you eaten up, any of it? Oh. Yeah, we've ate it. Uh, What's it taste like? It's just like venison, really. It's a little yeah. bit, it, you ha- it's a little bit more dry than venison. Um, but it's still good, and uh, I actually had that bear butchered up there because I was gonna say because you wouldn't had to bring it out of anatomy. Yeah, anatomy is different, a little different, and I had to get it home. So, um, and I had time to kill because I went with a group of guys and they were still hunting. Yeah. So I took it to a butcher and he processed it, and then we uh, froze it in dry ice. So then on the ride home, that, I mean it was solid frozen. Yeah. You know? And then the uh, that the hide. Uh, and the head and that I actually took to a taxidermist over in Indiana and having a rug made, bear, yeah. bear skin rug. It's not done yet? No, he said it, it, it would take probably uh, a year, a year and a half before it was finished. Really? Mm-hmm. Why so long? Yeah, I think because of the tanning process right now, um, just like in any other industry, COVID has taken a hit on things. Yeah. And I think that the people that do the tanning. Not every ta- taxidermist tans things themselves. Some of them are just like the artist, but they send it out to get tanned. Yeah. And I think the tanning process now takes a really long time because it's hard to find people to do it. Hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. So let's just to, we'll end on the thing that got you in trouble. So uh, I'll tell you this a little bit of the story and then Rick can finish it. So I happened to know Rick was on this trip, obviously. Um, and he posted a picture on Facebook about him catching this bear. I was like, holy crap, that thing's huge. So I jokingly sent a message, put, commented on his thing, um, and put hashtag animal cruelty. Yeah. Well, what happened after that happened? Yeah, so, <laughs> so and, and luckily it was able to be dismissed, but they, but they, when you put that hashtag on there, and I didn't know this could even happen. I didn't. I but it, it, but it put me on a uh, like a list of people who are cruel to animals. <laughs> so if you pushed on that hashtag, it went straight to the list, and then there was like my face, like this guy, you know, is cruel to animals. So <laughs> for a minute there, I was like, holy cow, you know. But uh, but we figured out that you could uh, delete it, and it took you off the list. So we did do that, <laughs> and I was no longer on the animal cruelty list. Yeah. Which, by the way, I love animals i got two little puppies and i love dogs and i love cats and all that stuff but i love to hunt you know so but you don't go hunting dogs do no 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 hunt any dogs <laughs> <laughs> uh, well let's say let, uh, i would get i would i would assume that they would class in canada they would classify bears as a pest anyway right yeah there's so many of them they're everywhere i mean there's there's because like here, deers are considered a pest. Yeah, yeah, and up there, I mean, in Canada is a lot different than the U.S. I mean, yeah. this was my first trip to Canada, but I didn't realize in Canada, there's nothing. I mean, like you go to the big city. So we went to um, Winnipeg and spent the night there. Well, Winnipeg has like 1.5 plus million people. Once you leave Winnipeg, between there and the next big city, there's like nothing. There's just, you know, uh, basically just forest. You know, so I had, a, I had a friend of mine, he, he was a, uh, I think he was a volunteer, I don't think he got paid. Anyway, he was a volunteer for like a, a recovery uh, place. Mm-hmm. And they were in Edmonton. But that, the place where they was, it was so secluded. It was like a 13 hour drive just to get to it. And it was in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. He said there was nothing. The reason they did it is because they would call the turkey these people. You know, it was like a, a I guess, drug or rehab place. And the the reason they could get away because there was nothing it would take them hours to get yeah so like even on our trip like once we got into canada and left the big city like there was maybe a gas station every couple hundred miles that was it and you better hope there was somebody there if you need gas because so know, i guess electric cars aren't going to take off in uh, canada, in canada <laughs> it's, it's, there's a, i mean I, it was awesome but there's there's a lot of space between yeah. it's not like driving from here to kansas city where you have Columbia yeah, and all different these different places, places. Yeah, when there's, but up there there's just nothing in between. So yeah. it, was, it was neat though; it was cool. 
Well, appreciate you joining me again. I was very intrigued behind your uh, your hunting habits. So yeah, well, thank thought, you. I thought we'd get some reviews on that one for sure. Yep, thanks for having me, and as usual, I appreciate you. Cool. Thanks, Ray. All right. As always, I've got a few sports. We can replace the car, not the customer, and I'll see you next week.